Hello and welcome. Thank you all for joining us today. I'm Nick Kinoki, Director of Technology for the Asset Leadership Network, and it's nice to be here this Thursday with you all. Uh, excited to be here. And with us is Lindsay Ziegler and Alex Berenblit, uh, also Mike Bordenero, Executive Director. What's who up, Mike? To, who wants to note that your aspect ratio is not showing the slides properly. So I oh. you just see asset leadership. Really? And the pictures of uh, everyone just moved a little bit. So For what it's worth, I see it. You oh, see you it. saw it? Oh, wow. I, I see don't it now. Oh, I put it back. I see it now. Okay, good. Alex sees it. Great. Well, we'll just get see. right... We'll get, we'll continue then. Uh, ALN patron members, thank you so much to Jacobs, Mantech, Onuma, ABS Quality Evaluations, and CGI, as well as our, all our organizational members, especially the Andrew James Advisory Group. And we'll talk more with uh, President Lindsay Ziegler in just a moment. Uh, before we get underway, we do want to mention that if you're out there watching, please send any comments, questions, or feedback to the chat. Uh, or you can use the Q&A function of this Zoom webinar. So uh, with that, Mike Bordenero, Thank get us goodness. going. Thank goodness this is old home week uh, today. Um, we're, we're a very casual uh, organization. And before we get to uh, talking, um, later on, we're going to post a survey link. And it's the first time that we've done a survey. And we'd like to get a sentiment, a feeling of how asset management is impacting your organization or your region. And it's just 10 questions. You can do it in way less than 10 minutes. There's opportunity to provide comments, but you don't have to. Um, and then on the 22nd of uh, October, we're having a special value and benefits from asset management presentation where the Australian results of the survey will be presented and the US results of the presentation will be, uh, survey will be presented also. It's gonna be very interesting. And what I said about this being old home week, I, I'm, it's very good to be talking with Lindsay and one of her best students, Alex, but both myself and Nick were students also. And we all went through the training program and became ALN A55K professionally certified um, individuals. So um, with the new ISO documents out, it's really a time to focus on those documents. We can always do asset management best practices. They're common sense, but the documents really lay things out to help guide an organization in a way that's clear and beneficial. And since Alex is with an organization that had more than 50 uh, professionals certified, uh, we wanted to start with Alex and talk about what he thought of the course. And it's been a while, so he can see what the impact of the training is on his organization, LMI. Okay, well, I'll, I'll give a summary. It, you're exaggerating just a little bit. I believe it was something like 40 or 44 as opposed to over 50. Okay. Um, so just exaggerating just a little bit. Um, what's, uh, uh, first I'll describe what I did and why to explore getting certified. Um, we actually got a bunch of people certified. I, ex I explored getting certified in ISO 55,000 back in 2020. Some of us may remember, just like we're facing maybe now, we were facing a federal shutdown. And so we, I was exploring on behalf of LMI, I was exploring good ways to be productive should the government shut down. And one of the things that, that I, uh, I looked into was maybe I should get certified in ISO 55000. I had been aware of it largely because of... Uh, this fellow named Jim, and uh, the Dieter, uh, Jim the Dieter. Yes, uh, Jim and I are both very active in the National Property Management Association, uh, and uh, he had been talking about ISO fifty five thousand, and it occurred to me, well, maybe I should explore getting certified and using my time productively during a government shutdown. 
And I talked to my boss at the time about it. And I said, maybe we should look at maybe getting a couple of other folks at the same time. Well, that couple of other folks ended up being uh, instruction in two waves uh, via, um, uh, it was all uh, video, well, tele tele telework kind of stuff. It was a mix of um, self work as well as a couple of sessions of webinars or web meetings such as this. Um, that two waves turned out to be, again, as I say, roughly 43 people, 44 people. Um, uh, so it really shocked me to get that many. Uh, and the good news is uh, we learned an awful lot. Uh, before I came into uh, the instruction, my specialty, my area, again, what National Property Management Association does is it focuses on personal property equipment, material, that kind of stuff. And I knew that ISO 55000 was broader than that. Well, LMI, as a consulting firm, has people that look at all forms of assets, facilities, land, uh, intangibles. Uh, that's what ISO perspective is. And that was tremendously useful to LMI because we were able to help our clients, which are principally federal agencies, think more broadly. Excellent. So that's my introduction. So Lindsay, how was how was his class? Were they were they bad students? What what were they like? They were great. And um they actually I think were the inaugural students for our um hybrid online version of the course yeah. because it was right at that we we had only taught it in person up to that point and then the pandemic hit and we all said oh, yep. oh we have to do something like right now so we uh took the course and we converted it into this this hybrid version with some instructor-led live sessions still not in person still uh like this gotcha. webinar and then a lot of self-study. And now you've got um, good news about in-person training. You want to yes, share it's, that? Yes, it's, it's available now. We, we can now do in-person training. And in fact, we have some scheduled about two weeks from now in New York. That'll be the first in-person class since the advent of the pandemic. So that's, that's uh, really exciting to... Uh, let people know that that can start happening. And again, it's another single organization that is training yes. their team together. And does that allow yes. you to get into details and uh, specifics that are helpful for the organization? It does. When you have a mixed group, um, there, there's pros and cons. When you have a mixed group, people learn from each other. And they can they can talk about, well, in my organization, here are the issues. Oh, well, these are the issues in mine and how I dealt with that. And, and you might want to consider this. So there's value in that. But there's also a lot of value in having a, a single organization in a class, because first of all, the, typically the people know each other. Um, and so they're a little more comfortable with each other in class. And that could be really good in terms of conversations and, and uh, going through some of the, the questions that we ask and the exercises that we ask. Alex. And then then mm -hmm. when it comes time to do the SAMP workshop at the end of the course, then they can either choose to do the SAMP uh, based on the uh, case study that we provide which is a fictional jurisdiction called Arendelle. And I have to tell you, I came up with that name before Disney did Frozen. So I'm going after them for copyright violation. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. Um, so they can but, either do that or they can do one based on their own organization. So yeah. Alex, I've got sure. a question related to this for you. Okay. Lindsay pointed out that if there are people, uh, students from other organizations, there's cross pollinization and you can learn from others. LMI is a pretty good sized organization. 
were people learning from each other, even though they are inside the same organization? Absolutely. Because while LMI is a good size organization, we have different areas of subject matter expertise and we have different focus areas. So LMI has deep subject matter expertise, people that do this, focusing on the management of buildings, facilities. We have people that understand the management of land and, and infrastructure like roads and bridges and stuff like that. I know very, I know very little about that. When it, but, when, but they know very little about what it is to manage equipment and warehousing and that kind of stuff. So we collaborate and we learn from each other. What I, what many people call silos. Lindsay knows where I'm, I think knows where I'm about to head. Uh, I learned many years ago to call them cylinders of excellence. <laughs> I was going to try to type that in before you said it. I knew where you were uh, Okay. But the, the idea is each of these areas, we the, the, the LMI has and many other organizations have experts in their area. And there's so much that they can learn from the other cylinders of excellence. Uh, so when you build a SAMP, you're not building a SAMP based on one perspective. Excellent. So um, now if we could get into some examples or anecdotes that Lindsay, you've seen your students uh, or they've related to you or Alex, what are you seeing once people go through this? And Nick, we'll get your perspective on this too. But Alex um, or Lindsay, go ahead first. Go ahead, Lindsay. What I, what I typically see um, pretty much every time we give the course, um, most of the people who are taking the course really appreciate the, the live lecture sections. Yeah. Um, and honestly, the way I run those is I'll throw out a question and then I'll just let the group run with it. And the amount of information that people convey and people learn and I learn, I learn every single time um, is, is just amazing. Uh, typically when we get feedback, it's like, that's the best part of the course. Yes. I'm Alex, seeing Alex I, agree. I vigorously strong. agree. <laughs> Alex, what have you seen the results uh, um, at LMI? I think what we've seen is we've gotten the different, those cylinders of excellence, the different experts having a much broader perspective than they did before. Uh, and they bring that perspective to uh, a federal agency so that they understand um, that their world that they're, that they're familiar with is only a part of what that organization needs to consider and think about. That's the most valuable thing. And when, when Lindsay throws out a question, it's almost, I, I have a, a mental image of that. It's almost like she tosses out a balloon that gets bounced around. And you get the different ideas and what about, hey, I didn't know that. And what about that? And what, that's the most valuable part of this. Uh, when I look at ISO 55,000, that's the perspective that typically you don't have. What Jim the Dieter taught us is that if you start an asset management initiative for the first time at a large organization and you need to pull together the, the bosses of all the different categories of assets, they'll probably be meeting each other for the first time. And I think that's really... Uh, intrinsic in the document about this holistic systematic thinking. So it's really good to hear you say that that has happened. Yeah. Uh, are, are you bringing anything to uh, go ahead, Lindsay? 
I was just going to say that that what Alex just said and what you just said ties into one of the fundamental concepts of ISO 55000, which is alignment or what, what uh, the ALN has started calling a line of sight. In other words, you, you need to align what you're doing, not only vertically, so that what, what you're doing in your cylinder of excellence um, <laughs> aligns with the organizational objectives and goals, but you can't do that in a vacuum. You need to have that line of sight to the other areas as well. So, so the guys that are maintaining the, I'll go back to water systems because that's what I know most, uh, the guys that are maintaining the pumps, okay? So that's Alex's cylinder of excellence. But you have to have the controls on all the, the, the weirs and the gates and the lift stations or the pumps are useless. Mm -hmm. And that's the guys who know the linear assets. So to get optimal results for your organization, you really do have to figure out how to work together. Mike, uh, if I may, in the I was going to you next. Perfect. In the in the words of Martin O'Malley, who spoke with us on a program maybe two or three years ago, he Former said, "You know, governor you, of Maryland, right?" Um, he said, I, "I think that you know you can keep your cylinder. You know, he used silos, but cylinders of excellence, excellence, you can keep them as long as you can land the data on a map." that is usable by the, you know, for collaboration by leaders and other silos of excellence uh, to communicate and collaborate on a regular cadence um, of accountability and transparency. He said, yeah, that's a paraphrase, but it was an amazing statement. And I, I really feel like the A55K perspective uh, it exemplifies that. What I was gonna ask you, Nick, is you are uh, represent the young, and uh, people who are new to asset management. Uh, you had been working with us as the technical director, but uh, what did you learn when you took the course? Well, just the um, the statement from Alex about thinking more broadly was, was useful. You know, thinking more about, less about an asset on a day and more about a system of assets that deliver value over time, um, ideally, you know, sustain, you know, forever um, or, you know, however you want to phrase it. But uh, I really liked that thinking being broadened over a time horizon, a life cycle of assets or, or service deliveries, and then, uh, you know, expanded from objects that have, costs and you know monetary values associated with them expanding that to um you know objects that have symbolic you know have other types of value um you know for relationship values or environmental that you know our stakeholders are valuing more than costs these days and you know that's not explicitly well maybe that is maybe they can talk about that more how that's mentioned in the standard but uh i really liked that as well and I'll say that I, when I took the course too, I was very new to hands-on asset management and I was going, it just clarified so much for me. I had understood the, the gen, gen, general issues, but boy, understanding the specifics was really beneficial. So now, oh, Alex, were you going to say something? I was going to say, let me give you an example of how things can relate to each other. Okay. Okay. So years ago, I, I was working for an army contractor. I was managing all the government property, meaning the personal property, the equipment uh, owned by the government uh, in several warehouses, one in Iraq, one in Afghanistan. That was fun. I didn't, fortunately, didn't have to go there. But in the warehouse uh, that I got to, that, that, that was where I worked, um, there was a large, very large uh, stainless steel tool. It took four pallet stations uh, and weighed 19 tons. It had about that much dust on it when I arrived at the company. Turned out it was sitting there for 35 years. 
Wow. The company had bid on a um, army contract to build an amphibious tank. And this thing that was consuming all that space that was very valuable, we needed the space, um, was just there because the engineers at the company wouldn't let it go and the government uh, wouldn't let them get rid of it either. Why? Because uh, when they built the prototype, the prototype sank like a stone. So the company decided not to to withdraw from the bid. And the government paid for that tool. The engineers wouldn't let it go. Well, that was occupying valuable space in a warehouse. So that was impacting the facilities folks, not just me managing government personal property. And what was that doing to the company? Because the company, because the company, my employer, what was that doing to their financial hit? Because they were paying for that carrying cost. So that impacted the financials of the company. The government was no longer paying for it. So that's one example. It's well, a little one. Example. Were you able to get it out using those approaches? The answer is yes. It took me a long time to finally get approval, but I did get approval. And this is the funny part. The recycling value only. We got it moved. We had to pay for a, a special handler to pick it up and get it out of the building. Yep. Net net return to the company was over two hundred thousand dollars in just recycling value. Excellent. Uh, we need to make that a case study, but it addresses <laughs> it addresses a comment that Jack Kelly made in the comment section. I saw it. That there are challenges to the common sense approaches that asset management brings, but actually, if you use ISO fifty five thousand and your yeah your expert education in it that the Andrew James advisory group leads you to, you yep. can use asset management to overcome these challenges. And that's a perfect example of how that happened. Indeed. So Lindsay, can you take some time to tell us a little bit about the operation of the course, the, the mechanisms, you know, what is a student looking at um, or a company? Uh, maybe give them a couple options of in-person or web-based. So um, for the web-based training, which the majority of our training is right now, yeah. um, still people are haven't gotten back all the way, and maybe they never will, to, wait, to where things were before. And maybe they don't want to. It's optional. Maybe they don't want to, and that's yeah. fine. Um, so the, the web-based course consists of pre-recorded lectures um, and uh, – exercises that people do online. Um, so uh, the online course has a, poses a question and then people get into a conversation um, on, on forums and uh, those tend to be really good. Um, it's another place where I throw out a question and see what people say. Um, the lectures occupy, I think about 16 hours over a course of two weeks. So if you spend two hours a day, you're spending a lot of time on, on the course. Most people can do it in less than that. Um, there are, and normally on the uh, online course, we have five live sessions, um, uh, one hour each. And uh, the last session of course is a, uh, uh, kind of a lightning round review of what did you just learn? Um, because it's important if people want to want to sit the exam to have a review at the end. Um, and then the exam, so we use a learning management system called Moodle. And uh, I liked it so much that I recommended it to the ALN and ALN uses Moodle for the exam. And then they have a- yeah. uh, yep a proctoring system thing called uh, Proctorio um, so that there's no question that people are, you know, popping back and forth between the actual materials and the exam. They're, they're actually taking the exam. 
Well, we still have a 98% pass rate, which is pretty darn good. Um, I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's basically the online course. And we provide people with a, a uh, watermarked copy of a watermarked PDF copy of the slides uh, that they can keep. Um, so that they have all the training materials uh, that we use during the course. I still refer to them. They're, I think they're helpful. I really do. They are. They are. Um, and we allow people to have access to the course for a minimum of six months. It's the, the um, practical answer is it's six months or whenever I get around to it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and then so in person, um, what's, what's it looking like uh, in October, the in-person class? Uh, so the in-person class, um, it's a three-day course. Um, this particular uh, client um, is a government entity, and they are not allowed to pay for certification exams. So the exams will take place offline um, for anyone who decides that they want to pay for them. Um, but we cover essentially the same material over the course of the three days. Yeah. Um, and we have, again, a SAMP workshop, a strategic asset management plan workshop towards the end of that third day. Um, and we, we're actually remodeling that a little because the 2024 release of 55,001, um, the previous release, kind of said, well, you know, you should have stuff in your SAMP. This one is very specific. You need these things. And so we want to cover you need these things as it says in the new standard. That's pretty that much a lot. That's pretty much aligned with what you were teaching anyway, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not. It's not really much different from what we were teaching. Um, but it's explicit now. Now it's got, um, so if you're not familiar with the standard, uh, 55,001 is littered with what we call shall statements. And those are requirements saying the organization shall do something. And for the SAMP, now there's a whole lot of the SAMP shall contain X, Y, and Z. And so we are modifying the uh in-person course to take care of that. And we'll also be modifying the online course. We're looking at um, being able to include all of the 2024 changes um, in early 2025. Excellent. And for anyone who has taken the course before that and has certified to A55K, we're planning a uh, essentially a either low cost webinar to bring people up to date on what's what the differences are between the 2014 and the 2024. 10 years is a long time. Yes. A lot has happened in the world in 10 years. Yes. So we're at the end of the program. Alex, do you want to uh, make any concluding comments? The only concluding comment I really have is um, we found the training very effective, very useful, uh, if for many reasons, but not the least of which is, uh, as we've kind of said before, we understand each other better. And that's an important consideration when you do what we do, which is uh, the LMI, LMI is in the business of helping the government do, do its work better. That's essentially the bottom line of what LMI does. It's not by any means limited to uh, asset management. Uh, uh, LMI does a lot of consulting in a lot of different areas, but with respect to um, helping the federal government operate better, that's what LMI does. And the the uh, the courses, uh, particularly with Lindsay uh, instructing, <laughs> but with, with the, the uh, asset leadership network uh, support and Andrew James, that training gave us 
the necessary uh, understanding more than anything else. And this is coming from a gentleman who does training for NPMA. So he knows training. So thank you very much, Alex. You're welcome. I Nick, appreciate would... those kind words. Nick, yes, would... I do have a I do have a last thing to say. Um, we are currently enrolling for a course that begins November 4th and a course that begins January 13th. Right. Um, enrollment for the November course will close soon. So if you're interested or if your training budget for this year has a few bucks left over, um, you might want to go ahead and enroll. I've put the links in the uh, chat and I believe the links are also on the ALN uh, training page. Yes, and we're going to post um, a PowerPoint presentation with uh, lists of the values and what people will be getting out of that so people can use that to help uh, explain value to uh, senior uh, leadership. Yeah. Nick, do you want to make a uh, closing statement and bring us home? Yeah, I would just say uh, to any leaders out there watching, the ALN has, you know, I feel like we've established it takes leaders to set the culture of asset management in an organization that's really required to get the most value out of um, this sort of thinking. And uh, I would just say that nothing helps uh, instill that culture more than having your people trained up uh, through the A55K training. Uh, and, uh, and then I'll say thank you to our patron members for making this program and others possible. Uh, Jacobs, Mantec, Onuma, ABS Quality Evaluations, and CGI. And also all our organizational members, especially the Andrew James Advisory Group for working with us on sharing the good word. Uh, but again, thanks to all our organizational members and uh, please reach out if you'd like to work with us. We really, we like partnering with other organizations here at the ALN. Thank you to the audience and uh, thank you to all of our guests and we'll see thank you. Thank you. Thank you.